Good morning, Highbury Congregational Church and friends. We meet together for this time of reflection and prayer. On the 30th of March, Monday. We can't go back to business as usual. We simply cannot go back to business as usual. I've been reading through Jeremiah and praying through Jeremiah, and I'm struck by how in Jeremiah chapter 32, he's instructed by the Lord to buy some property. Now, there's nothing unusual about that, except that the enemy was at the gate. The whole of his society was about to be overrun by the enemy. Why make an investment at a time like this? It seems a fool's errand. A bad investment. And yet, he buys that property in hope. Because the Lord has promised that there will come a day when fields will again be bought and sold in this land of which you now say, it is a desolation abandoned by man and beast. So he buys in hope. As we begin our working week, we may wonder, what's the point of getting up and maintaining the routine? It seems ridiculous to invest in anything now when the whole world seems to be falling to pieces. And yet there is hope. There will come a day when we will get past this virus. But we cannot return to business as usual. These are the words of the Lord. You say of this place, it lies in ruins. Without people or animals throughout the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. It is all a waste inhabited by neither man nor beast. And the pubs and the restaurants are closed, the cinemas too. Our streets are relatively empty except for those who are walking their dogs and getting their daily exercise. It's very quiet and desolate. Yet in this place will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bridegroom and bride, here too will be heard voices shouting, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good. His love endures forever. There will come a day when weddings will happen, when the streets will be filled again, when we will meet in pubs and restaurants, when we'll be able to go shopping again. It will come. There is hope. But we cannot return to business as usual. As Jeremiah unfolds, he recounts how the people made a covenant to set free their slaves, and they did so. But no sooner had they set their slaves free than they enslaved them again. They tried to return to business as usual. And then when Jeremiah tries to call the king to account and to speak the Lord's word to him by sending his scribe with a scroll, the king reads and chops sections of the scroll off and throws them into the brazier, brazier into the fire. The king does not want to hear the word of the Lord. He wants to return to business as usual. We are being called into a time that is deeply unsettling. We are being uprooted. And yet we need to carry on. We need to maintain our routine. And we also need to imagine the world as it could be. And as we begin to think of setting free the slaves, imagining the economy in a different kind of way, of this moment when the earth is breathing once again, how is it 
that we can get beyond this and continue to do what is right by the environment and caring for the whole of creation. Jesus calls us to deep and sacrificial love. In John 15, he says, This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than this, that someone should lay down his life for his friends. We cannot go back to business as usual. Life is changing. We are being called to a deep kind of loving. In this <clears throat> time of uprooting and change, I want to share with you a poem from The Peace of Wild Things. It's the first poem I encountered in this collection. It's called A Wet Time. The land is an ark full of things waiting. Underfoot it goes temporary and soft. Tracks filling with water as the foot is raised. The fields sodden go free of plans. Hands become obscure in their use, prehistoric. The mind passes over changed surfaces like a boat, drawn to the thought of roofs and to the thought of swimming and wading birds. Along the river croplands and gardens are buried in the flood, airy places grown dark and silent beneath it. Under the slender branch, holding the new nest of the hummingbird, the river flows heavy with earth. The water turned the colour of broken slopes. I stand deep in the mud of the shore. A stake planted to measure the rise, the water rising, the earth falling to meet it. A great cottonwood passes down, the leaves shivering as the roots drag the bottom. I was not ready for this parting, my native land putting out to sea. On the 2nd of October, as I began ministry here in Highbury, I read that poem and it churned something up within me, my own sense of rootlessness. And I recorded these words in my journal which seem appropriate for us today. I have moved into a time marked by consolation, yet those images of flooding, of being swept away, of the roots dragging over the riverbed, of what used to be familiar and solid and rooted, speaks of this moment. I am uprooted. I am submerged in the unfamiliar. I am in a queer place that feels exciting and full of possibility, but also quite dangerous. Save me, God. Help me to trust you 
as my native land is put out to sea. And so, Lord, in this time of flooding, of rootlessness, of change, hold us in your love and give us the grace to be able to imagine a new world, to set free those enslaved by the way things are, and not to turn back on this liberation and freedom. Jesus, teach us to love as you have loved us. We pray these things in your name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful Monday.